Hare Krishna. Ekadashi Brat is one of the most auspicious ways to please Lord Sri Hari Vishnu and attain his unlimited mercy for spiritual advancement in life. Shayana Ekadashi occurs on the 11th day of the waxing moon in the month of Asha. It will be observed on Tuesday 20th of July of this month. The glories of Shayana Ekadashi have been mentioned in Bhavishya Uttarana Purana. This Ekadashi Brat is so powerful that one who simply reads or hears the glories of the Lord becomes free from all their sinful reaction from past lifetime. It signifies freedom from all sinful activities and fulfillment of all desires. A devotee should, however, only desire for unalloyed bhakti or pure devotional service to the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. This Ekadashi is also known as Devashayani, Harishayani, Padma and Ashara Ekadashi. The word Shayan mean, means to sleep in Sanskrit. According to the Purana, from this day onwards, Mahavishnu goes into a deep sleep or Yoga Nidra on his cosmic bed made by Anantashesh in the causal ocean. It also marks the beginning of Chaturmasya, the auspicious period of four months, Ashar, Shravan, Bhadrapada, and Ashin. Any devotional service performed during this period bestows immense spiritual benefits and indescribable virtues. Lord Vishnu finally wakes up on the day of Prabhudhini Ekadashi in the month of Kartik. Sri Krishna explained the importance of Shayani Ekadashi Vrat to Dharmaraj Yudhishthir, the eldest of the Pandava brothers, by sharing a wonderful historical event that Lord Brahma shared with his son Narada Muni for the benefit of entire human civilization. During Satya Yuga, there was a saintly and truthful king named Mandata in the Ikshaku or Sun dynasty. Lord Ram who later appeared in Treta Yuga, belongs to this same lineage. Mandata was an excellent administrator and all of his subjects were very wealthy and lived happily. The king's own treasury was free of any ill-gotten money and thus he ruled happily for many years. Once, however, there was a severe drought for three consecutive years which led to famine in his kingdom. People were in a miserable state of affairs and dying due to lack of food and water. What to speak of usage of these resources to perform the Vedic rituals for obtaining spiritual benefits as prescribed for Satya Yuga. If a king or head of country is irreligious, both he and his subject suffers. But Mandata was a virtuous king and an ardent follower of the religious principle. Therefore, this terrible situation in his kingdom was a manifestation of negative reaction from sinful activities performed by someone in his kingdom. So in order to resolve this crisis and remedy the situation, Mandata went into the forest to seek advice from saintly personalities. With no luck so far from his efforts, he finally came to meet the exalted sage Angira Muni, one of the son of Brahma, whose effulgence lit up all directions and humbly approached him for advice. Angira Rishi said to the king, the present age Satya Yuga is the best of all ages. For in this age, dharma or religion stand on all of its four legs of truthfulness, austerity, mercy, and cleanliness. In this age, everyone respects people with Brahmanical qualification or those with inclination towards acquiring and imparting knowledge to the other members of the society. Also, everyone fulfills their respective occupational duties and only trained Brahmanas 
with right knowledge are allowed to perform Vedic rituals and penances. Although this is a standard, there is one unqualified, untrained person who is unlawfully performing the rites of austerity and penance in your kingdom. That is the reason there is no rain in your land. You should therefore punish this individual for by doing so you will remove the contamination inflicted by this person in your kingdom and you will bestow peace to all your subjects. However, the king wanted some spiritual solution to this problem as he was hesitant in punishing someone who was performing austerities and penances, although illegally. Angira Muni then suggested that the king, including everyone in his kingdom, should observe a strict fast on the day of Shaini Ekadashi, as this will destroy all the sinful reaction and bestow perfection on them. Mandata followed the instructions of Angira Muni and just as the sage predicted, there was rainfall and in due course of time, there were abundant crops and rich harvest of grains. By mercy of the Supreme Lord Rishikesh, the master of senses, all the subjects of King Mandhata become extremely happy and prosperous. Such are the glories of Devashayani Ekadashi. Happy Ekadashi, all goes to Sri Hari, all goes to Srila Prabhupada, Hare Krishna.